These things are a great starting point if you want to learn how to validate yourself. They're really easy things to implement today, right now, if you so choose. Hello, welcome. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how you can learn to validate yourself, build your self-confidence, and how this will help you achieve your goals. Let's talk about it. I wanna stress the fact that you do have people who love you and who care about you. But the thing is, as we all know, sometimes people are busy or sometimes they can't give you the attention or the love that you feel like you need if you're going through a difficult moment. In that situation, you need to be able to learn how to validate yourself so that you can deal with whatever you're feeling and then move on from it. We're gonna go through three ways that I have found help to validate myself and hopefully they will help you as well. The first thing is that you need to be your own best friend. And you've probably heard that phrase said by other people but I want you to really think about what that means. How do you treat your best friend? You are probably very kind to them, you probably give them the benefit of the doubt, you probably buy them birthday presents or gifts when they do well, you congratulate them. If they start talking badly about themselves you're probably the first one in there to be like hey that's not true, you're actually amazing for this and this or you're capable or you're able to do this, stop putting yourself down. Think about the way that you deal with your best friend or if you don't have a best friend just you know a good friend of yours, your sister, your sibling, whoever. Think about the way you treat them and then think about what it would mean if you treated yourself that way because I think we have a, or at least for me I have a tendency to be quite hard on myself and say things to myself if you look at like your inner monologue say things that you would never say to your best friend so it's just about becoming aware of those things and then you can challenge them and you can be like oh I don't need to be that hard on myself yes I can learn something from this situation but I don't need to be beating myself up dragging myself down if I was saying this to my best friend they probably would have hung up or they would have you know walked away from me and been like you can't talk to me like that so you need to be aware of how you're talking to yourself in your own head is that something that you would say to your best friend because the thing is you're stuck with you forever as long as you exist you exist. <laughs> What's the saying? Wherever you go, there you are. You can't run away from your problems. You will always have you. And <laughs> at the beginning of this like self-love journey, that might seem very daunting and very annoying. <laughs> you will eventually grow to really appreciate that because you will learn how to validate yourself, how to build your self-confidence so that you're like, oh, I do always have me. Like when no one else cares or when no one else is there, I have me, like I'm always on my own side. I'm not having like an internal battle with myself, beating myself up. So it can actually be a great thing, but I know it can seem quite daunting at the beginning. If we're talking about how to be your own best friend, you may not know what that looks like yet. In the same way that when you met your friend, maybe you were friends instantly, but there would still have been a time where you didn't know that much about them. So you got to know them. What books do they like to read? What films do they like to watch? How do they dress? What does their day look like? What are their hobbies? All of these things, you need to learn them about you. And instead of, I mean, I guess you could like talk to yourself in the mirror and have a conversation with yourself that way. But basically what you need to do in order to be your own best friend is to spend time alone and work out what you like doing. So do you like reading? Do you like yoga, running, knitting? If any of those things you are like, no, I don't like that. Great. If any of them you're like, oh, actually, I've never tried knitting before, or I've never tried yoga, try. You might really surprise yourself. Do you like dancing? Do you like going to the gym? Do you like writing? Do you like makeup? Do you like organizing things? Do you like going shopping? Like, do you know yourself? Can you be your own best friend? You need to know yourself to be your own best friend. And the reason why I think it's important to spend time alone is that you need to get to know yourself outside of anyone else's influence. So instead of thinking, oh yeah, I'll go to the cinema with that person to see this film, Maybe that's not necessarily what you would have picked, but because you're going with them, you're like, yeah, this will be a bonding experience and we can go and it probably be good. It might not have been my first choice, but I get to spend time with this person. Great. But what film would you pick if you were going to the cinema by yourself? Maybe you don't like going to the cinema, but do you know what I mean? You need to spend time by yourself because that's the way you're gonna get to know yourself and we're building then a foundation on which you can then validate yourself because once you know who you are and you're able to be your own best friend, you can then have your own back with anything challenging that comes up, anything mean that someone says about you, you don't have to like take that on and absorb it and believe it because you will have this foundation of, I'm my own best friend, I know what I like, I know who I am. So this is a really important step to learn how to be your own best friend. This is like building the foundation to be able to validate yourself. So once you've built this foundation and you know what you like and you know who you are, you're able to, the second step, invest in yourself. The same way that you would invest in spending time with your friends and getting to know your friends better, you would show up to their birthday parties, you would send them a card. If you went to like a museum, you might send them a postcard. Think of just all of the stuff that your friends do for you. You are able to invest in yourself once you know how to be your own best friend. The same things that you would do for your friend, you now do that for yourself. Investing in yourself in terms of validating yourself, that looks like planning a self-care evening. I did a video about what my self-care evening looks like, if you wanna check that out. It could be journaling, gratitude lists, like building a routine for yourself where you can invest time in like your emotional health, your spiritual health, put time into that because 
doing all of these things is gonna be validating yourself because you're always making time for yourself. You're not saying, oh, I'm too busy to journal, I'm too busy to do my gratitude list. Think about what your non-negotiables are now. If you were to say, I'm too busy to have a shower, right now, hopefully, you are someone who <laughs> can regularly have a shower. But imagine how silly it is if you were saying to yourself, on a regular basis, daily, I don't have time to have a shower. You'd be like, that's ridiculous. Of course, I need, even if I don't feel like I have time, I need to make time. And basically, by investing in yourself, what you need to do is you will make all of the things that you think are crucial to invest your time in for your own self-esteem esteem in order to build your self-confidence, you make those things non-negotiable so that in the same way you might think, I don't have time to have a shower, you think that's ridiculous, you need to make it so that when you say to yourself, I don't have time to journal or whatever it is that really helps you. So I don't have time to go for a run. I don't have time to do yoga. I don't have time to clear up my space. Whatever it is that really helps you feel confident and centered, make it so that that thing is such a priority, such a non-negotiable, that if you start telling yourself you don't have time to do it, you think that's nonsense, you think that's ridiculous. So you really put time into building those routines and doing the things that you know will build your confidence and help you stay grounded. If we're talking about investing in yourself, also invest in yourself if you want to in terms of money, not only in terms of time, but like buy yourself flowers every once in a while. Buy yourself whatever you like, if you like, food, like invest in some fancy, I don't know, cheese or some fancy chocolates, invest in some books. If you like fashion, buy yourself something new, like don't go crazy with this. But in the same way that you would buy your friend a gift, if you saw something that you knew they might like, you would be like, oh, I know they'll love that book or I know they'd love that card and you would buy it. Do the same for yourself. I recently celebrated one year sober and I bought myself a happy birthday, happy first birthday card because I was like, I'm really the one who is gonna care most about this and I want to celebrate that. So I'm just gonna buy a card for myself. And part of me is like, is that very weird? But at the same time, I'm like, well, no, this is something that I'm really proud of and I'm really happy with and I want to celebrate it and I want to buy myself a card. And now I've got the card and every time I look at it, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm happy. Like one year sober, well done. And I'm able to validate myself Self. But that comes from knowing what's important, knowing what I care about, so my recovery is very important to me, and then choosing to celebrate that and thus validating myself through investing in myself, as we've talked about. The third way that I think you can learn to validate yourself is to get creative. Basically, to me, creativity is self-validation. Like, creativity is validating yourself in action because most of the time when you're creating something, whether you like drawing, painting, you like graphic design, you like making videos, you like making a collage, whatever it is, writing, fill in the blanks of whatever it is creatively that you like to do, that thing you probably do just from a pure love of it. You don't necessarily want to share it with anyone. You might just write a poem because you feel like it or sketch something from your favorite TV show or sketch your favorite character from your favorite film just because you feel like it. You're not doing it for anyone. Yes, then you might decide, oh, I want to share this poem, like I'm proud of it and I'm gonna share it with someone. But initially you're just doing that thing because you love it and you feel passionate about it. You feel like creatively inspired. To me, creativity is such a great way to validate yourself because that's basically what it is. You're creating something from nothing just because you want to. That is such an easy way to start with validating yourself because it, that's basically what the process is. And through being creative, through creating something that you really love, you then learn that it doesn't really matter if other people don't like it because you made it for yourself and you know the story. So if you write yourself, I don't know, a short story or a poem or a letter, you will know all of the little details, like what that specific time means or what building you're thinking of when you're describing whatever. When you describe the weather, you might be thinking of a particular time. Those things are all individual to you. Yes, they can mean anything to anyone else because anyone else who reads it will then fill in the gaps and be like, oh, the building looks like this from their own experience. They will bring something new to that poem, which is why poetry and writing is just so cool. But to you, you made that, you know exactly what it means and you've created something so you've validated yourself, your own experience, your memories through the thing that you've created. It's just such a cool process. So I would really urge you to get creative in whatever way that looks like to you. If that's painting, writing, through fashion, through the way that you decorate your room or your space, like whatever it is, find a way for you to express yourself creatively. I know for me, this has helped massively in building my confidence, building my self-esteem, working out what I like, validating myself through being creative. We've talked a lot about learning to validate yourself, love yourself, build your confidence, build your self-esteem. This is just like a starter, really. And I hope that you are able to take something from this and it has inspired you. We need to remember the three things. Be your own best friend, invest in yourself, 
and get creative. I think these things are a great starting point if you want to learn how to validate yourself and they're really easy things to implement today, right now, if you so choose. Thank you so much for watching, God bless, and I will see you in the next one. <laughs>